Shalom, shalom, shalom to everyone. This is Dr. James A. Durr. All praises to the Most High Yahuwah. He who breathes life, behold the nail hands. His son, Yahushua HaMashiach, Yahuwah is salvation. The Ruach Haggadah, the set-apart spirit, the comforter, the one who leads us into all truth. Praying that all is well with you and your family. Praying you be obedient and that you accomplish all that the Most High Yah has given you to do. Oh, hallelujah. It's so good to be here. It's so good to talk to you today uh, from the written Torah, the Holy Word, the Holy Writ. Uh, we love the Word of Yah. His Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light, <clears throat> excuse me, unto his, my path. That's what His Word is to me. Job said, I have esteemed His Word more than my necessary food. Nothing like abiding in the Word. If you abide in me, Yahushua said, and my words abide in you, that's John 15 and 7, and you abide in me, my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will. It shall be done unto you. I told you, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, at the first uh, uh, start up of YouTube is to get a lot of practical lessons out to you that will help you and enhance your walk. At the same time, as we go through this, I am also going to be teaching uh, uh, on the Sabbath, about the Sabbath day. I'm going to be teaching you about the feast days. I'm also going to be teaching you about the slave ships. Uh, who we are as a people, how we got over here. Uh, that's about a that's about a six or seven part series on that. Uh, so as we continue to move forward, you're going to see more and more lessons on practical living and more lessons about who we are as a people. I pray that you continue to subscribe to my channel, like hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and tell others about this channel. Please, I pray that you continue to come back. And look at uh, study, uh, get in this channel and study some of this teaching that I have. It will bless you, it will benefit you immensely. So we're not going to prolong anything. We're going now to the book of Psalms, the 40th chapter. Hallelujah. And it deals with how Yahusha or Yahuwah will sustain his servants. He's going to sustain you in the midst of everything you're going through. He's going to take you out of your trouble and put you in a high place. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalms, starting 40, 40 uh, uh, chapters, start, starting the first verse, and it reads, we're going to read from the Sefer Bible. I also will be uh, dealing with you from the Amplified, and I may hit, uh, hit some of that King James as well. Psalm 40 of chapter, starting at the first verse, I waited patiently for Yahuwah. I waited patiently. I was steadfast in my walk. And he inclined unto me. He came to me and he heard my cry. That's what you need to understand. Yah said he is never far from us. The steps of a good man are ordered by Yah. He hears the righteous when we cry. He hears us when we sigh. He hears us when we groan, when we moan. Why? He, take, he, he does that because we are his people. He's not going to let you stay there forever in that place. But there's some places he has to lead you to. And yes, we have to go through, uh, even come out on the other side of victory with tears in our eyes. With shouting. With screaming of victory. Are you hearing me? Dancing as David danced to get to the next level. We, we have to do whatever we have to do in this word, according to the scripture, to, to step, be, uh, be steadfast in him so he can get us out of our trouble. He said, I waited patiently uh, and expect, expect, expectantly, excuse me, for Yahuwah, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Watch this. Remember I told you earlier that the Bible talks about in Jeremiah how he said there's an expectation for us. He said, I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace, not of evil, but to give you what? An expected end. So I'm waiting expectantly on him, and my expectation shall not be cut off. The second verse says, after I prayed, I waited patiently for him. He inclined to me and heard me. He bought me up out of also a horrible pit, a bad place. Out of the miry clay, I was stuck into something. I was stuck in a bad place, stuck in a rut, stuck in trouble. And after he got me this door, he set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. Now watch what it said in the Amplified. Second verse, he bought me up out of a horrible pit of turmoil, a tumult of destruction. I was in the destructive path. Out of the Mari clay, the mud, stuck in it, wasn't going nowhere. You ever seen a car? Back in the old days, and I think people still may be doing this. I don't know. I haven't done it in a while. But if a car got stuck, we were taught by some of the older men, 
uh, uh, to go outside and get a piece of plywood or uh, uh, depends on how deep the uh, uh, mud was or two by four or something like that to stick it up under the tire that was spinning uh, either go uh, front wheel drive or uh, you had the back wheel, uh, the, the, the rear wheel uh, drive and whenever you stuck that plywood or that two by four up under that tire it would hit that wood or whatever that solid thing was up under there I'm just using the, about the wood it would cause that car to go up on that uh, smooth surface and back up out of that stuck place that mud and you were able to drive out of the mud. I've seen many cars get stuck. And I've seen people put sticks. I've seen people put uh, uh, something that was solid and hard enough for the t tires to catch a grip on and to come out of. Then I've seen some that spin and spin no matter what you put in, under them. And they could never get out. But I'm not talking about never getting out. I'm talking about with y'all, you are going to come out. He is the, he's the one that's going to pull you out of the miry clay. He's the one that's going to get you out of that and put your feet up on a rock to stay. He's going to, watch this, amplify, and he set my feet up on a rock, steadying steadying my footsteps. He got me locked in. He steadied my footsteps. He made my feet like Heinz feet. He locked me in and established my path. He got me on the straight and narrow. The steps of a good man are ordered by Yah. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He's going to get you to your destination. Hallelujah. After he, when I watch this now, after I waited patiently, he inclined unto me. He heard me. He bought me up out of that pit, out of the mud. He set my feet up on a rock and established my going. Guess what he's going to do next? Third verse. He put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our Elohim. Many shall see in fear and shall trust in Yah. After they see Yah bring me out, after they see Yah deliver me, the same people that were talking and running their mouth, they're going to see me in a state of praise. They're going to see me in a state of worship. They're going to see me in a state of adoration. They're going to see me in a state of glorifying him, praising him for what he only could do, praising him for what he's done, for what he's do doing, and for what he's about ready to do for me. I praise him in advance. I praise him for the past, the present, and the future. Why? Because he deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. Can I get two or three people out here tonight that will help me praise him and honor him and worship him? It don't mean you can't worship him. It don't mean you can't honor him. You need to glorify y'all. Hallelujah. You need to praise him. Dr. Dre ain't got no shame in this game. I'm going to let the praise flow. He said that everything that has breath, praise him. I got breath, so I'm praising him. It says, bless him at all times. His praise shall continually be in your mouth. His soul shall make a boast in Yah. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify Yah with me. Let us exalt his name together. What's wrong with us that we can't praise him? What's wrong with us that we can't magnify him and glorify him? I dare you to praise him. I give you a few seconds to praise him. Go ahead and praise him. I clap my hands with you. <laughs> Hallelujah. He deserves the glory, the honor, and the praise. Give it to him. Exalt him. Extol him. Lift him up above measure. Bless his wonderful name, Yahuwah. In the name of Yahusha Hamashiach. Hallelujah. Just had to get my praise on right quick because I felt like praising him. If you put a new song in my mouth, that means I'm singing something new. It's fresh. A song of praise to him. And they say a song of praise to a man. I can see you not praising him if you're singing to me. You're singing to me. You might not be praising too well because you're singing to a man. But if you're singing to him, he put that new song in your mouth, but him a praise unto him. You got to give him what's due his name. Even praise to our Elohim. Men that see and fear and glorify him. You better praise your Yah. You better praise him. Hallelujah. I'm going to do it. I ain't no rock crying out for me. I'm going to praise him. Oh, bless his name. Hey, hallelujah. Let the redeemed of Yah say so. Though that's been redeemed out of the hands of the enemy. I got the flow. I got to preach it. I got to teach it. I have to let everybody know that Yah is good. That Yah is worthy to be praised. That Yah is worthy to be glorified. David was a praiser. David was a worshiper. David praised him. Hallelujah. David praised him so hard that he came out of his clothes with a praise and a shout. And, the, and his wife that was sitting up in the window looking at David, scoffing at David, because he was so happy that the Ark of the Covenant was coming back into the, the land of Israel. He was happy about it. He found the Ark, which was sitting in Obed Edom house. David said, I'm going to praise him for the Ark has come back to the, to the place of Yah, Jerusalem, the place of bread. 
The house of bread, I'm going to praise him. David said, it has come back to his proper place, going back into his proper position. And she got mad and scoffed at David because David began to praise him and come up out of his clothing. She didn't understand how happy David was. She misunderstood, let me say it like this, she misunderstood his dance, his praise under Yah for a man trying to show off his flesh. And y'all know what happened to her, right? Because she wouldn't give y'all the glory in that place. Looking at her husband come in, he was rejoicing. The whole city was rejoicing. She's sitting up in the window with an attitude. And the Bible said, and Yah shut her womb. Better be careful looking at people uh, talking about folks that's praising Yah. And you sitting there with a little stinking attitude. You don't know what y'all bought them people through. I bought that individual through. You don't know. You better stop that. You better praise them with him. The Bible said pray with those that need prayer. Rejoice with those that rejoice. Laugh with those that laugh. Cry with those that cry. Know your place. Know your position. It's time and place for everything. Right now is the time to praise him. Verse 4. Blessed is that man that make Yahuwah his trust. Oh, hallelujah. And respects not the proud, nor such as turn aside the lies. Let me read what the Amplified says. Blessed, fortunate, that's what that means, prosperous and favored by Yahuwah is the man who makes Yahuwah his trust. You're going to be blessed, fortunate, and prosperous and favored by Yah who makes Yahuwah his trust and does not regard the proud nor to those who uh, lay a lapse into lies. No, we got time to be dealing with no lying folks. No respectful and proud, arrogant folks. They ain't got time to deal with no arrogant, prideful folks. I want those that are humble, that are broken, that understand, that been through something. Oh, hallelujah. Praise your way through. Praise your way through. The fifth verse, the Sefer Bible. Many, O Yahuwah Elohim, are your wonderful works which you have done. Many are your wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts which are towards us. They cannot be reckoned upon in order under you. He said, I can't even count the things you've done to me. They can't even compare. I can't compare. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than they can be numbered. Now listen at the Amplified. Many, O Yahuwah, my Elohim, are the wonderful works which you have done and your thoughts towards us. There is none to compare with you. Ain't none that can compare to you. That's why you got to praise him. Ain't none like him. There is none like him. Let me say it again. There is none like Yahuwah. There is no other God. There is no other Elohim. Don't want to use that G word. But there is no other Elohim. There may be some little E Elohims, but they're not like our Elohim. They can't do anything. They can't hear they can't see, they can't touch, they can't move, and they can't answer. If I were to declare and speak of your wonders, they will be too many to count. He said, David said, I couldn't even count all of your wonders. I can't either. All the things he's done for me, I'm still seeing him move now in a place that I never would have thought I would be, I never would think, thought I would be in. You ever been one of those places, you say, how in the world did I get here? And you see the hand of Yah, and you say, Yah, I know you love me. I know you're moving for me. I see your hand, and he's always getting us out. He's always blessing, and he's always answering prayer. And see what y'all say about the uh, fourth, 40th chapter and the 6th verse. Sacrificing and offering you did not desire. You don't want sacrifice and offering. You don't desire. My ears have you opened. Burnt offering and sin offerings have you not required. He said, that, that ain't what you wanted. That's not what you were looking for. Let's go to the 7th verse. Then said I, I come in the role of the sefer of the book. That's what the sefer means. It is written to me. Now, here's a prophetic word. David wasn't just a psalmist or wasn't just the king of Israel. He was a prophetic psalmist. He spoke future tense. David spoke about what was going to come. This part right here, he was speaking about Hamashiach on his way. Are you hearing me? He was speaking about the Hamashiach. Now, you see in the book of Psalms 22, it's dealing with the suffering Savior. Psalms 23, dealing with the shepherd of our soul. Psalms 24, dealing with the victorious king that was coming. So, David was a prophet, not only just a psalmist, but he was a prophetic psalmist. When he sung, 
he prophesied. And things came to pass. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book uh, to do your will. Everything was written to me. That's what, that's what Yahushua said. In the book of Hebrews, it said the same thing. Lo, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O Yah. He even said, uh, Yahushua also said, prepare me a body so I can become that sacrifice for man. So I can become that sacrifice for your people. He said he came in, uh, to save the lost sheep of Israel. And when he came to save us, and, and because we didn't do what we were supposed to do, he opened up the door for the Gentiles to get in, the foreigners. You must be born again. Now look what he said in the eight verse. He said, then with Hamashiach again, again, I delight to do your will, O Elohim. Yea, your Torah is written, written in my heart. The ninth verse, I have preached righteousness in the great assembly. Lo, I have refrained my lips, O Yahuwah, you know. Now here's David talking again. David said, I've been preaching. I've been talking. I've been teaching folks. I proclaim your good news of righteousness, the amplify and the joy that comes from obeying you in the great assembly. Behold, I will not restrain my lips from proclaiming your righteousness as you know, O Yahuwah. That's, uh, that, I love that because it sounds like me. That's where I want to be. If I'm not there, y'all get me there. I don't want my lips to be refrained or restrained from proclaiming your righteousness. That's what I'm putting here to do. That's what I'm born to do. And I have to do it. The 10th verse said, I have not hid your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. And your salvation, your Yeshua, not Yahusha. Yeshua is salvation. Are you hearing me? Yeshua is salvation. Yahusha is salvation. Yahuwah is salvation. Yahusha is Yahuwah is salvation. That's what the son name is Yahusha. But the word salvation means Yeshua. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your, and your truth from the great assembly. He said, I told the truth. I didn't hide your righteousness. I declared your faithfulness. I didn't hide your righteousness. I made known your righteousness, your white world living. I declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I, 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 and I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. He said, I told all. 11 verse, withhold not you, your tender mercies from me. Don't stop your tender mercies from coming to me, O Yahuwah. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. I know that's many of our cry. Please keep us. Let your tender mercies be upon us. Keep your loving kindness and your truth uh, continually. Let it preserve us. Hallelujah. Let it preserve us, O oh Yah. Don't withhold your compassions from us. Keep your tender mercies upon us and continually preserve us. Twelve verse, for innumerable evils have encompassed me about. They're all around us. My iniquities have taken hold upon me, on me. That can happen. Things that uh, make me bound. What are the iniquities? The word iniquities is the Hebrew word abon, which means to be hooked and to be hooked again. Hooked again till you can't get out of it. You're trapped. You're locked in. Your iniquities, they can happen to you. I'm telling you, you can get locked into your iniquities. But the Bible said he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with the stripes, we are healed. He was bruised for our iniquity. Are you hearing that? So is the iniquity. David said, my iniquities have taken hold of me. So that I am not able to look up. He said, I went through so much. I was going through so much stuff. I couldn't even look up. I was bound by stuff. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart filled me. David said, I was going through so much pressure at, at the, my, uh, uh, in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was under so much stress and depression and go through. I was heavy. He said, my heart was filling me. But then David turned around and said, the 13th verse. Be pleased, O Yahuwah, to save and deliver me. O Yahuwah, make haste to help me. Man, that's a powerful word right there. How David turned around. He said, I was going through so much. I was heavy. I was up under heavy pressure, heavy struggle. Then David turned around and said, but Yahuwah, please be pleased with me. Please get me out of this situation. Deliver me. Make haste to help me. Make haste to help me. Please get me out of this place. And I pray that for all of you. I pray that for myself. Y'all, whatever state we're in, any hard place we're in, please make haste to help us, to get us out of this place. 
the 14th verse, let them be ashamed and confound, confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy. Every enemy that's coming against you and I, I pray that y'all make them ashamed and confounded. He said he will confound the wicked. Every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. He said, I will confound that wicked. I'll make that enemy be confounded. I'll mess up his mind. I'll confuse him. He said, I'll make him turn back in defeat and dishonor. I'll drive him backwards. Let me see what it says in that 14th verse again. Let's read the Sefer Bible. Let them be ashamed and confounded to, together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backwards and put to shame that wish me evil. Go after them jokers, y'all. Fight for us. Fight for us. Don't let them get away. And I'm not holding back my tongue. If you thought to do me evil, you thought to do my family evil, I pray that y'all comes after you. I'm praying that prayer. Ain't no, uh-uh, no. No, I'm not going to let the enemy get away with that. Go after my enemies. That thinking to destroy me. What I'm going to do, sit there and throw a party for them? No. Y'all, my enemies want to raise up against me? Attack in Yahushua's name. The Bible said let y'all fight your battles. The Bible said the battle is not yours, but it's yours. He must want to fight. Give it to him. He even told them, uh, 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 when it comes down to Armageddon, Yahuwah is coming to fight. He's going to draw them in. The Bible said he's going to do something to make them want to come to fight. He gonna, he's going to... Uh, Make them look at this place. He's almost going to like lure them in. Thank you, y'all. Into a trap. Like when he said Judah. Send Judah. When Judah began to sing, what happened? The enemy was trapped. And y'all destroyed them. Hallelujah. So y'all want to fight this battle. Oh, hallelujah. Let me go on and teach this because I see it. I see it. He said, let them run, let them be driven backwards and put to shame that wish me evil. You want to wish me evil? You can be put to shame. Just like Haman ended up being in shame coming against Mordecai and Esther them. Our ancestors, the Hebrew Israelites. Are you hearing me? The 15th verse. Let them be desolate for a reward of the shame that say unto me, aha, aha. Let me say it now. Let me read the 15th verse and amplify. Let those be appalled and desolate because of their shame. Who say to me, aha, rejoicing in my misfortune. You know people rejoicing in your, in your misfortune. They, they rejoice in mine too. I know they are. They rejoice in your misfortune. They say, aha, uh -huh, look at them going through. I thought they had something. I thought they had something. Here they go talking about the Hebrew stuff. I thought they had some. They were rejoicing in us. They look. Then we got the Hebrews uh, teaching. We found out who we were and got rid of all the lies. Now they're laughing at us because we may be going through a few things. Because we got you got to come out of a lot of stuff. Y'all have to heal your mind, have to heal your soul, and you may be going through a test or a trial uh, because of what you're learning. You may be learning more stuff, and and the enemy is attacking you, and they'll laugh at your misfortune because you're learning who you are. We are not some hate group. You may see some of these guys out there teaching, said the Hebrew Israelites, they out there teaching a hate, hateful message. That's not us. I read the scripture to you earlier, first John, the third chapter, dealing with we we the people of love. We hate everybody that turn aside y'all's word, that come against y'all's word. We hate that spirit. We don't hate the individual, we hate that spirit, that wickedness that they do. We hate the wicked. A wicked individual that do that stuff against y'all. We don't turn against that. We don't deal with the wicked. The Bible says even y'all hates the wicked. But our job is to love the brethren and the sisters, according to the the precepts and the and the and the, and the Torah of y'all. Our job is to love. I'm not going to rejoice at nobody's misfortune. That's wicked folks that's doing that, and y'all going to deal with them. Now, the 16th verse says, let all those that seek you rejoice. That's what seeking y'all do. When you begin to seek y'all, you should be rejoicing and be glad in you, y'all. 
Let such as love your Yeshua, salvation, say continually, Yahuwah be magnified. There it is again. Oh, magnify Yah with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let them rejoice in Yah. Let them be glorified. Let them be uh, lifting up the name of Yah. Let them seek Yah and rejoice. Be glad in him. Love is salvation. Hallelujah. I told you before, salvation means Yeshua. A lot of people say his name is Yeshua. No, his name is Yahusha. Yeshua means salvation. That's what people get it mixed up at. They think when they're saying Yeshua, salvation, which Yahushua, Yahushua did bring salvation, but guess what he did? The Bible, the word Yeshua means Yahuwah is salvation. Isaiah tells us that salvation comes from Yahuwah, the Father. Yahuwah, the Father, is salvation. He's the author of salvation. He sent the Son to represent him. Yahusha is salvation, which is the representation of the Father. He is, that's the Father. The Father is salvation. That's the Father. The Bible said the Son came to glorify the Father. Hallelujah. Salvation is of Yahuwah. Yahusha is Yahuwah. Salvation. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. So, Yeshua means salvation. Let all those that seek you rejoice and be glad. Ha <laughs> ha! Hallelujah. The 17th verse, he said, now, now listen at this. I'm going to read the Amplified and I'm going back to the Sefer Bible. Even though I am afflicted and needy, still Yahuwah takes thought and is mindful of me. I may be going through a tough time. I may be afflicted and I'm needy. But he said, Yahuwah takes thought. I told you, you know the right thoughts he thinks towards you. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. He said, I take thought and I'm mindful of you. You are my help and my rescuer. Oh, my Elohim, do not delay. Let me read now the, the uh, Shepherd Bible, the last verse of 17. But I am poor and needy, yet Adonai thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O oh my Elohim. Yahuwah, don't wait to rescue me. Come and get me right away. Bring me out of my trouble right away. Fix everything right away. And when you bring me out, I promise you, I'm going to praise you and shout. And so I do all this tonight and say to you, listen, to y'all be the glory. To y'all be the praise. This is Yah's word. Hallelujah. We need his word. And this word is dealing with how Yahuwah is going to sustain you and I, his servants. He's going to keep us in the midst of every day. And so therefore, in knowing this, we give him praise, honor, and glory in Yahushua's name. Listen, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Push that like button. Hit the notification bell so you receive the new alerts concerning new lessons. And share this lesson. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High Yah. Until next time. Shalom.